um, without any further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. All right. Thanks, Rick. And uh, yeah, by all means, more questions the merrier. This is going to be uh, pretty informal, so I'll kind of give a brief introduction of you know who we are, where we're from. This might be repetitive for some of you. Um, I think it's interesting. Uh, and then we'll go over some of the new products, like Rick said, uh, some of the key differentiators that set us apart. Um, but yeah, uh, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in. We'll try our best to get at them uh, before the end of the call, and obviously, you know where to find us uh, afterwards. Uh, but AV Pro Global Holdings, that's the parent company, um, which comprises of AV Pro Edge, of course, is our connectivity, uh, where we got our start, Meridio, that's our test and measurement. Uh, we started building uh, HDMI test generators, analyzers uh, about four or five years ago. Uh, and that's really what got us into uh, manufacturing and, and coming to light with some of these products. Uh, as Rick mentioned, we are doing our own cables, bullet train, uh, with some unique features, functionality on those. And then we also have our uh, own control system that we introduced uh, last year. We've been doing it for a few years under the table, uh, but we have the ability to do a completely custom uh, control system to uh, whatever layout that you guys want. So that's AV Pro Global Holdings in a nutshell. Uh, we were established in 2011 simply as an online distribution channel. Um, some of you guys may have heard of the Imaging Science Foundation. Uh, we've always hosted classes for that in regards to video calibration. Uh, so we had some connections in the calibration world. And uh, in a nutshell, that's what allowed us to uh, start building some test generators, analyzers. Um, a large company needed a generator that did HDCP 2.2, 18 gig, you know, all flavors of HDR. And that product really didn't exist. Uh, so Matter CTO went out to China, found some engineers to build it, and that was the beginning uh, of our relationship. So that actually allowed us to merge with a manufacturer, um, giving us our competitive advantage in that we own a factory. Uh, our goal is to deliver some simple products, um, new and you know innovative products, not necessarily Me Too type products. Um, and uh, our technology will be good for the future. Um, but as I mentioned, the biggest biggest advantage we have is that we are the manufacturer. We're not an OEM uh, company, uh, so we're out there doing our own thing. We control everything from the chipsets that we use uh, to the design and to the functionality uh, of the products. Um, some key differentiators here, we actually own our in-house oscilloscope, uh, that piece on the top right there. Uh, it costs more than my house, uh, so we can actually see the eye pattern on you know different HDMI devices, see what our devices do to that, or different repeater devices as far as cleaning up signals, uh, how a good cable will interact with a bad source. Um, so we have, if you, any of you guys are interested in that, we have quite a few screenshots uh, of the scope and what a bad source looks like, what a good cable does to a bad source, what a good repeater device does. It's uh, some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, but we test everything in-house uh, with that, and that's something I can say a lot of our competitors do not have is their own oscilloscope in-house. Uh, we were the first uh, company building 18-gig HDMI matrices by a long shot, uh, as well as for, uh, the first with 18-gig HD base T by about a year. Um, the reason that is is we actually have our own proprietary method of doing compression, uh, which really sets us apart as well. Um, a lot of companies have longer warranties. We offer a 10-year, we call it the no BS warranty or no hassle warranty. There's no no proration. If it's broke, we'll fix it. Uh, our tech team is second to none, I believe. Um, we also have CTS certified support team. So I know he was talking about the CDRUs in the, in the Infocom world. If any of you guys are CTS certified, uh, we have a couple of those guys back there as well. Um, different, you know, top TV manufacturers, different connectivity brands, our competitors, uh, they're all using the uh, Meridio uh, 6A and 6G. So this is our first product that we built, uh, which would be the uh, the 6G right here. So this is your generator. Uh, so if you got a, if you guys got are doing uh, you know calibrations in the field and you need a troubleshooting field, basically this is your go-to kit here. Um, I won't get too too in depth in as far as the features functionality here, but in a nutshell, you have any source you want to be. So you can emulate any source, generate any resolution with or without any flavor of HDCP, with or without HDR. So you can quickly verify if your system's doing what it should. Um, you know, a lot better than carrying around a, a Blu-ray player or something like that. And, you, you know, you're still, you know, pretty limited there. Uh, you can emulate EDIDs with this. We can do cable tests with this. Uh, with the 6A analyzer here, it's the exact opposite. So you're any sync device or any display device that you want to be. You can actually suck the EDID right out of a projector or display, and you, you physically are that, that, uh, that device now. So you can go upstream and test, you know, each of your components and make sure your signal's passing the way it should. Uh, so it allows you to 
you know, not only, uh, you know, verify your system, but when you're having issues, quickly be able to pinpoint those. So again, this is for your calibrators. The Fox and the Hound is one of our newer products, and essentially it's the 6A and 6G, just simplified. So this doesn't have any of the test patterns in it for video calibration, but it does have all the troubleshooting firepower. So this is for your techs in the field uh, to get the job done quickly. You know, when you do get a job in, verify that you got all your EDIDs tracked out, uh, everything's working correctly to the maximum potential. And again, when you're having issues, you'd be able to go up or downstream and be able to quickly identify which component uh, is uh, is causing issues or scrambling EDID or doesn't pass a certain bandwidth, maybe it doesn't pass HDCP, you'll be able to pinpoint that instead of guessing. So the fact of the matter is uh, a lot of integrators out there are just, we, we like to call it plucking and chucking. So when there is an issue, you know, cross your fingers that this fixes it. Um, and then, you know, if by chance it does, you really didn't get to the bottom of it and, and know what that issue was. So this is giving you peace of mind and it's a huge time saver. Time is money. Um, I think it lends us a lot of credibility to getting our start there, uh, you know, building the troubleshooting tools. You'll see in some of our products that we've really rolled uh, a lot of what we learned from troubleshooting and building these tools into our connectivity. Um, but AV Pro Edge, we're a full adopter of HDMI, HD Base T, HD Base T, or HDCP. Um, you know, contributing uh, members to that organization. We of course have matrix switchers, extenders, fiber optic extenders, DAs, uh, audio solutions, a lot of fix-it products, um, and then of course control. We do also offer some really unique products not offered anywhere else. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing some AV over IP type applications. Uh, which is great. The scalability is ultimately what sells that product. Uh, we ourselves are, are getting into some of that as well. We started developing last year on that platform. Um, so I would anticipate, you know, maybe by the end of the year, early next year, that, that we'll too have a, uh, you know, more scalable solution. But we were more, you know, um, I guess concerned with getting a signal from point A to point B, you know, uncompressed. Um, but still, we wanted something to have the scalability. So we built the Cloud9. And you can think of this Cloud9 system as a Swiss Army knife of matrix switchers. So it's a nine by nine matrix switch, but you can have as many outputs as you want. So it's basically nine sources to as many displays as you want. And we simply do that by stacking these switches on top of each other. So there's nine HD base T outputs here that are matrixable. And then there's nine HDMI outputs that are mirrored to the input. So let's say you have 15 displays you can actually just loop the HDMIs out of the outputs into the inputs on the second unit, then you got a nine by 18. Do it again, you got a nine by 27 and so on. Uh, so it's a nine by unlimited system that gives you all the benefits of an AV over IP system without any of the network switch. So there's no compressed video, it's all HD base T uncompressed video. You get instant switching. We can do a multi-view with this. So think of the multi-view as your 10th source and you can do four or all nine sources on that multi-view. So you can pump that to any or all your displays. And uh, as you see in this, it's actually got a few different receiver options. Uh, we can actually do video walls off this unit as well. So it's a video wall processor um, using our own FPGA chipsets. So if you just need to, all of these are rated at 150 meter. So all the outputs on this matrix are 150 meter uh, at 1080p. This is a standard receiver. It's about $116 dealer is all. Um, the switch itself is just a little over three grand, so you guys can, you know, start comparing, you know, costs. Um, and if you need to do a video wall, we have a separate video wall receiver. So, for example, in this application, we have the four video wall receivers for the four video or for the four video wall displays on this two by two. And then we have five standard receivers uh, for the, uh, you know, just standalone displays. And again, we can pump multi-view to any of these uh, or just one of these. We can do, you know, completely dynamic video walls. Uh, it's not just limited to do a two by two. Of course, we can do three by three. We can actually do up to 64 displays uh, on a video wall. So even if your customer just needs a simple video wall processor uh, and maybe wants to show, you know, different different layouts, custom video wall layouts, you have that ability to, to do a dynamic video wall as well. So really, really unique product that's not offered anywhere else. Again, it's giving you all the benefits of an AV over IP solution. Granted, you have nine sources or less, but there's no network switch, no compressed video. Uh, it's a much more solid foundation. Uh, here's some, just some different examples of different layouts. You know, you can get creative with the video walls. We can pretty much do uh, whatever you want. We are coming out with some standalone video wall processors too, so you'll see those later in the year. Um, some really cool, uh, inexpensive, unique, you know, just standalone processors. Um, this is another unique product, the Video Flux. Uh, some of you may have seen this, but this is a four in, two out 
uh, multi-format matrix, and you can do multi-view with it. So you see in the example on top, we have the four sources there, um, and then we have just one here. You can do that on both screens. You actually have the ability to manipulate the multi-view, so you can create a custom format. Uh, it's a good add-on if a customer wants to watch, you know, four football games at once or basketball games at once. A lot of people even feed this into a matrix, so you can have the the, the multi-view, you know, throughout the whole house as well, and not just a local system. Um, but before we get into the new products, I, I really wanted to touch on ICT or Invisible Compression Technology. This is really the biggest thing that sets us apart right now with uh, with 18 gig video distribution or, or distribution in general. Um, we've been shipping this product for well over a year and a half now. Um, our competitors, you know, have just come out with 18 gig HD base T solutions within the last six months. Really, um, there's a reason for that, and it's all about compression. So everyone should should be familiar with HD base T. I'd imagine it's limited to 10.2 gig. We're dealing with HDR and high bandwidth signals. Now we're going all the way up to 18 gig, and that's really where everyone had a hiccup and what's been taking so long to get 18 gig through a category cable. Um, so our competitors are using what's called DSC, Display Stream Compression. Some of you may have heard of that. Um, there's different ups and downs to it, but we threw it out the door about three years ago uh, because it wouldn't decode certain formats. Um, specifically 422, so all your Apple TVs, your Rokus, your Kaleidoscapes are wanting to do 4K60, 422. It has a difficult time uh, decoding that without artifacts. And I'll show you an example of that actually too here. Um, it, it, and it, it just really wasn't reliable. So we went back to the drawing board and we actually figured out with one of our current products, our scaler, our SC1, uh, which we'll touch over too, um, that we can actually do our own compression. So we can take in that 18 gig signal and all we do is a simple color compression, taking half the color out. We don't touch any HDR metadata or any of the bit depth information, but we take out half the color, which gets the bandwidth underneath 10 gig. And then on the receive end, we scale it all back together. So what comes in is what comes out, both visually and to test equipment um, with, without artifacts. Um, and that's why we've been shipping it for, you know, going on two years now, really, um, this ICT technology. So that, that ICT technology, here's a, here's a comparison. So this is display stream compression. This would be an example of what our competitors are doing versus ICT. This is completely proprietary to us. Uh, no one else is doing it. You can actually see the physical banding. This is just like a splash screen off an Apple TV. So this is 4K60, 422. That's what will happen. That's called artifacts. And you can see it's clear over here. Um, so we're able to decode all formats uh, of, uh, of uh, you know 18 gig and 4K. Uh, not just certain ones. So, you know, ideally, if you're using a system like this, you'd probably want to go into the menu screen and, and dumb it down, you know, to a to a different chroma subsampling instead of 422. But there's a lot of devices that are wanting to do this, and, that, and that's what it looks like through DSC. Um, the technology is built into our matrix switchers. Uh, we have some unique feature features functionality as well, such as scaling. So we're giving you scaling on the outputs on most of our switchers. We have some specifically built without scaling if you don't need it, resulting in faster switching. Uh, we're giving you audio delay. Of course, we're giving you the full 18 gig um, overbuilt EDID management. Uh, we actually have test patterns built in to these. And uh, HDCP 2.2, of course, will pass. Um, so just real briefly, this MX42, this has been a dealer's best friend. We sell a ton of them. It's about a $300 product dealer. And uh, it's a four in, two out, uh, full 18 gig matrix. But the, the kicker is you can actually, there's a scaler on the output number two. So if you want, you can scale down output number two. Um, this is perfect for getting around AVRs. So if you've got a local AVR, maybe it's 1080p, maybe it's 4K, but only 10 gig. Maybe it's 18 gig, but it really doesn't handle video very well, which has been the case with, with most of the AVRs we've came across. They're, it's kind of a crapshoot with HDR. So what you can do is with this one output, you simply dumb that down to 1080p with full audio give that to the receiver, something you know it can handle, and then it wants, and then with the other output, just go right to your display or projector. So the, the AVR has nothing to do with switching at that point. Um, so this has been a lifesaver with HDR. We have dealers that won't sell an AVR without one of these products. Um, that's been such a big problem. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but we have our DA12, um, which people are starting to copy now, but that actually has a scaler on, on one output as well little $90 piece. So if you're coming off a distributed video system and you got a theater with an AVR you need to get around, you can just insert one of those little $90 pieces. Again, scale one output down and then go with the other output right to the display. 
and then we have that built into our um, down mixer as well. But that's how big of an issue it's been is that we've specifically built that into three products to get around it. Uh, the four by four, full 18 gig, scalers on each output. Uh, all of our matrices, we're giving you both digital and analog audio breakouts. You combine that to the input, the output, or you can independently matrix it wherever you want. So the 8x8 would just be a bigger version of that. Uh, we have the 8x8 NSFS. This is your no scalar faster switching. That's what that stands for. So about a little over two grand dealer for a full 18 gig matrix switch. Uh, again, both digital and analog breakouts. And then we have the uh, 16 by 16 uh, HDMI only matrix. And this is less than five grand dealer for a full 16 by 16 matrix. This particular one's HDMI only. The coming soon here, we will have the 16 by 16 HD base T. So this guy will come with mirrored uh, eight outputs, eight, eight of them mirrored. We're on our four by four HD base T and our eight by eight HD base T. We have all the outputs mirrored. So this has got the ICT compression built into here. This will do 70 meters off the output, or you can do full 18 gig uncompressed. We give you both. They're both active at the same time. Uh, and then same on the 8x8 and on the 16x16, 16 16, there's only eight of them that are mirrored. So again, it's got the ICT technology built into it. Uh, you'll be able to, per each output, generate test patterns. So you can shoot off a 4K or an HD test pattern and verify that, that your, you know, your system's working as it should, even without a generator. This is just built into here. Uh, and then our extenders hey, are kind of, yeah. What's our timeline on that 16x16? 16 16? Um, I, I don't have a definitive time frame yet, but I would say within the next two months. And it's very, very competitively priced. Um, it's, it's, it'll be, it'll be a good seller. Uh, trust me, I'm wanting it just as much as you, Rick. Um, but yeah, so hopefully within about two months and, I'll keep you abreast of that. Um, getting a little bit off the presentation, I figured I'd go here to go over the extenders, and this will be, we were getting into some of the new stuff as well. Um, so this is just right on our avproedge.com. If you go under extenders, extender family, we have a nice little comparison chart. And we're actually working on getting some cheat sheets out to you guys as well um, with our extender and matrix comparisons. But this is all of our balance, uh, all the way from you know your standard 4K all the way up to 18 gig, as far as features, functionality, what they support, whether they scale, they have audio extraction, if you can generate test patterns. Um, but this is one of our new products here, the EXO uncompressed. So this is an uncompressed fiber optic extender. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are starting get, get it, getting into fiber. So this will allow you to use single mode or multi-mode fiber to transmit video completely uncompressed up to two kilometers. Um, this one actually is the first one uh, on the planet that's uh, fiber and that's supporting Ethernet as well. So we actually have uh, Ethernet ports on it. So we give you four ports. Um, these will support audio return channel, again, Ethernet. Um, and it's if your customer wants, uh, you know, basically the, the best option, this would be it right now as far as the uncompressed fiber optic extender. Um, pretty straightforward. It's essentially an HD base T transmitter receiver, except for using glass instead of fiber. So you're still getting all your IR, your RS-232, in this case, Ethernet again on this one, uh, and allow you to go, you know, really long distances. Uh, maybe if you're running into EMI issues, a lot of times, and that's when people are running fiber. Um, this is one we've been selling for about a year. We call it the EXO444 kit. This does use our ICT compression, um, but again, you know, full 18 gig with that compression, so you're still getting all your flavors of HDR, um, this one can actually scale. This one will give you full EDID management. Um, this one gives you uh, audio return channel as well. So this would kind of be a, a lower cost fiber option that's uh, basically doing everything the other one is except for except for uh, Ethernet. So all of our 444 extenders, these are the ones with ICT built into them. So you can see we have 100, 70, and 40 meter. And then we actually have a, a 40 meter 444 plus as well, which I'll touch on. But with each of them, the, number one, we'll never give you a stripped down HD base T Balin. So if the chipset supports it, we're going to build it and, and support every feature functionality. So you'll never see a Balin from us that doesn't do PoE, doesn't do IR, RS-232, and so on. Uh, this is our best selling one, the EX40444. So 40 meters at full 4K, 70 meters at 1080p. Um, it's, it's giving you full 18 gig bandwidth support using ICT. 
But ag again, because we're doing the ICT, we're, we're, we're not only doing the compression better and can decode all formats, but we're giving it a lot of other benefits um, because we have that scaler built into it. So number one, it'll downscale for you, uh, which none of our competitors are doing to my knowledge as far as in the balance, but we can downscale 4K to 1080p for mixed systems. We give you full EDID management and, em and EDID emulation so you can actually suck the EDID right out of the TV with this, or you can shove a canned one down there. Very important. Um, there's test patterns built into it. So you, again, like from the matrix, you can generate 4K or 1080p test images. You can do the same from here. All you do is unplug the unit, hold down a button, power it on, and you'll have a 4K or 2K test image that you can toggle between and quickly troubleshoot in the field. Again, even without a, uh, a generator. Um, and then we give you audio extraction as well. So you can see this is on both sides, both the transmitter and receiver. You got your, your stereo uh, analog audio extraction built right in. So again, the scaling, the EDID management, the test patterns, and the audio breakouts are all, all benefits because we have the ICT compression built into it. Uh, Bidirectional power, of course. And anybody familiar with our Balins, these are the thinnest ones on the planet. They're, they're no bigger than the RJ45 jack. Uh, the box itself is actually the heat sink. So this is our number one selling uh, extender. Um, moving on from there, we have the 70 meter, which is in the same thin form factor, just a little bit bigger because we added four ethernet ports onto it. So this particular chipset supports ethernet. That's why we gave it to you on there. Um, if you guys ever need to go 150 meters uh, over uh, you know, 1080p, this has got 150 meter long range mode built into it. Uh, so you can do that. Again, all your bi-directional power, scaling, EDID management, test patterns, you get all of that because we have the ICT compression. Uh, and then we have the 100 meter 444. This guy um, is really fully loaded. So this is doing Ethernet, USB, audio return channel. So you can do ARC right through the, uh, right through the HDMI or the TOSLink. We have USB device and host on both ends. So this is another thing. A lot of times if people are giving the USB, they'll have it be one way. We're giving it to you both. And again, all your scaling, test patterns, EDID management, all that's built into it. So this is 100 meter at full 4K that'll do Ethernet, USB, and audio return channel on top of all the other features, functionalities on there. Um, we do have what's called the EX4444 Plus Kit. This just came in last week. So these are shipping now. And this, this is a brand new HD base T chipset that I think we're actually the first guys using it. Um, but this one is similar to your EX100444 in the, in the fact that it's got USB, but bi-directional. This one supports audio return channel, but this chipset does not support ethernet. So this is a 40 meter at 4K extender kit that allow you to do USB. So your USB 2.0 cameras, uh, you know, KVM devices, um, and audio return channel. So if you need a, a lower cost extender that does ARC, this would be the EX4444 Plus. And again, that ARC, you can actually just uh, see if I can get a picture of it. But yeah, so you can just select, uh, you know, if you want to go to, to Toslink or directly through HDMI. So it's got a little dip switch on there. Um, and a lot of our competitors, too, if they're giving you Ethernet, they'll give you one port. We're giving you, you know, two on each end. Um, so as far as that's concerned, that's the, the 18 gig extenders there. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably doing some conference rooms, uh, boardrooms, you know, little simple point-to-point -point jobs. Uh, we got a new new lineup of wall plates. So all of our wall plates are single gang, and you can buy them in 70 or 100 meters. So this is an example of our HDMI-only wall plate right here. Um, so you can see we have a pretty muted design, so it blends in well uh, with, with uh, you know, the room, basically whatever room it's in. So this is just simply an HD base T transmitter and a wall plate form factor, single gang. Uh, again, you can buy them in 70 or 100 meter. And then we have uh, the, uh, as far as the wall plates, we have an HDMI VGA version. Network's going a little slow here. So the HDMI VGA, and we also have a mini display port, but this, is, this seems to be the, the most popular one yet uh, these days. So HDMI VGA, it's auto sensing. You can input select there if you have them both connected at the same time and toggle between them. There's your audio input there. And then we have the uh, mini display port as one as well. Um, 
and all of them are shipping except for the VGA one. That'll actually be those will be in next week. So free to sell them there. Uh, and where am I at here? So yeah, we're going to the mini display port. Wall plate. I was on the wrong item. I don't know how much you guys run into that. We're we're seeing it more with Apple. Um, so yeah, definitely the VGA one's probably the better seller now. But we have the mini display port as well. So single single gang, all of them, either 100 or 70 meter. And if we're just going to the extender family again here, uh, if maybe your customer doesn't need 18 gig. Maybe they don't need HDR. Maybe they're just doing you know standard 4K or 1080p. This is our uh, this used to be the best selling extender until the EX40 came along doing the 18 gig. But this is our standard uh, EX70 UHD kit. So this will do 4K, won't do HDR. Uh, it will do HDR with some trickery, but again, you, it's only a 10 gig product. Um, it's the same same uh, slim form factor for about $230 dealer. Uh, so really a really a good value. Uh, all of these products, again, have a 10 year non-prorated warranty on them. Bidirectional power, IR, RS-232. So this would be your, 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 your extender if you're doing a distributed system and you don't need 18 gig or HDR, this would be the one that you need to, uh, that, that'd be the one that you lean towards. We do have a new one uh, called the BKT, and it's so new it's not under there, so that's under point-to-point -point kits. So the BKT, this is our, this is our answer to you know, people who need just a low-cost extender. Again, 10-year warranty on this. It's still giving you bi-directional power, but you can see where we don't have the 48 volt uh, power supply in there. It's just a 12 volt, uh, so a little cheaper power supply. It'll still do IR, still does RS-232, uh, except for the form factor you can see is, is quite larger. Uh, so it doesn't have the slim form factor on it. Again, the different power supply, it is bi-directional power, so you can power either end. You don't need to power both. Um, and then as far as the IR functionality onto it, uh, it'll only work point to point with the receivers and emitters. So if you're trying to use this with a control system and go straight from your control processor into your uh, into the IR in on the transmitter, that wouldn't work. Um, you'd want to use the EX70 UHD kit or any of the 444s for that. So this is strictly meant to be a, a down and dirty, you know, inexpensive point to point extender. So not for distributed systems. It's $170 dealer for a product with a 10 year warranty and again, bi-directional power, IR, RS-232. So we're not even really stripping it down. We're just simplifying it a little bit and offering a very, very low cost extender with, with a hell of a warranty on it. So these have, we've been selling these for about a couple months now. Um, they've, they've proven to be very, uh, very effective in, in certain applications. They're not for everyone. So um, as far as uh, that's concerned, um, I don't know if any of you guys are doing any streaming applications or if you guys got some churches to work with or what we're doing a lot of this down in Texas is with school districts, we're selling them these impulses. Uh, this impulse is just a standalone device that will allow you to stream to you know, YouTube, Facebook, whatever website you want and record at the same time. So basically you plug a camera into there, either HDMI or SDI. We have two different versions on it and you can stream right to Facebook, to YouTube. You can record at the same time. Um, so a lot of these schools are, are selling subscriptions, I think like 30 bucks a year to their local website where they can watch, you know, the, the school's games, football, basketball, whatever it be. Um, a lot of house of worships we're seeing these in, you know, churches that want to broadcast their service. Um, so this is a somewhat newer product of ours. Um, we actually, about the only thing we're not doing being up front with everyone uh, right now is, is, uh, down mixing internally. In the matrix switchers, again, we're giving you the audio extraction. You can matrix that around wherever you want, bind it to the input, to the output. Um, but we're not physically down mixing in the switch. That's coming, I would say, within, within the next two months as well. But we do have the only down mixer in the world that's doing Dolby Atmos. We can actually take uh, Atmos and, and mix it down to two channel. So this would be our AVDM AUHD, full 18 gig, got the HDMI pass through. Again, it's got the scaler on the one output. So you can get around AVRs if you want, but this allows you to take two channel, distribute it throughout the house and keep your uncompressed audio intact. Um, so that's one down mixer that we have. This would be the other down mixer that we have, um, common application for this. This won't do Atmos, um, but, but you know, it'll do up to you know 5.1. So on the back of our switch, we give you the Toslink output, just run that into here. 
and then you're you're free to go into your uh, you know your your amplifier throughout the house for your distributed audio. Um, that will be built in shortly, rest assured. That's one of our number one priorities. Some fix it tools, as I mentioned, um, you'll 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 find a lot of these features functionalities in the scaler uh, very similar to our Balins because this is the beating heart of our ICT technology. So this is your fix it product that should be in every truck. It's really a you know kind of like the this Cloud Nine, a Swiss Army knife type product. So this is an 18 gig HDMI pass-through repeater device, but it's an up or down scaler. So this will up or down scale 4K to 1080p, 1080p up to 4K. Uh, it's an EDID manager. So you can see on the top here, we got all the canned EDIDs right there. Or again, you can copy your own right from the display or downstream device. Um, so it'll fix all your handshake issues. It's got an audio extraction on it. Um, and and uh, this is you know a piece that, most commonly is placed in our competitors' matrices that don't have scalers in them. So if you have a mixed 1080p and 4K system, um, you know you can put this device in, in, in front of that 1080p display and, and not have everything else be affected by that. So that's a common application for it. Uh, EDID management, probably be the, the second most common. And then the third most common application for it is that we actually have, uh, we can, we can uh, retrofit anybody's 10 gig system to do full 4K. So what I mean by that is in this example here, let's just say, you know, we'll, we'll say, you know, Leaf, they're easy to pick on or Control 4. They still have products that are only doing 10 gig, no scaling, no HDR. So you sell a customer a matrix, they try to hook up their Apple TV and say, what the hell, I can't do HDR. This is the most expensive piece in my system, and it's also the choke point. What is this? Well, you could either rip that out and put in a product that does do 18 gig, uh, or you can simply add a few of these scalers. So let's say that Apple TV going into a 10 gig matrix, all I would do is put my scaler right behind that source. So I'll take in that 18 gig signal, we'll do our color compression to it, we'll use our ICT technology. Now that bandwidth is underneath 10 gig and this matrix can handle it. We can shoot it out their balance and before we hit the display, we'll go back into another scaler and put it all back together. So we can actually retrofit anybody's 10 gig system to do full 18 gig HDR because of the way that we've implemented this. Pretty cool. So these are like 180 bucks dealer. So for a few of these, you know, again, one for each source and then one for each display, one to, en one to encode and one to decode, we can actually retrofit anybody's 18 gig system. So this is a huge piece, very popular, fixes a lot of issues. We now have the SC2 scaler on top of that. So whereas the other scaler only touches 1080p or 4K, this one doesn't care what's coming in or what's coming out. So this will output any resolution that you want. So all of a sudden that, you know, that 720 TV in the bathroom or something, we can downscale to that. We can downscale 4K, 1080p, whatever. We can even do interlaced progressive with this. So your cable boxes, 720, 1080i, 1080p, it's a, it's a mix between them, you know, very few 1080p's, but any, every time you switch resolutions, you're, you're causing an, another handshake. Um, basically, you know, you're, you're, especially with 1080i, it's a, it's a difficult to distribute resolution. So what you can do is just simply put one of these right behind each cable box. We can set this to say, hey, anything under 1080p, I'm going to scale to 1080p. So we're only starting with 1080p, and that's the only thing being distributed and 4K can just pass through. So it's basically two different modes on it. Your cable box mode where anything below 1080p is scaled to 1080p and 4K will just pass through. Or you can just set it to no matter what comes in, I only want to deal with 720 or I only want to deal with 1080p. I only want to deal with 4K. It'll up or down scale any resolution. And no one has a product like this, period. Um, so again, it's your EDID manager as well. Uh, but this would be your more robust scaling product. So whereas the other one's only going to touch 4K to 1080p, which is by far the most common, this will go above and beyond that. Um, as far as uh, cables, a lot of guys aren't aware for some reason that we don't offer cables, but we're, we've been doing our own. We put serial numbers on, on each end. So for cable management, it's really nice. Uh, again, we own our own oscilloscope in-house here, so we know for a fact what 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 we claim they're doing, they are doing. 
Um, just to give you an idea, our number one cable customer is Sony. Sony's actually been using us for all their video distribution at their trade shows uh, for the last three years because at one point in time we were the only ones doing 18 gig period. Um, and we have, again, a lot of the fix it products. We actually get a lot of uh, calls from their tech support, uh, people referring them to us for certain fix it products. Um, so these are the, we have passive cables from half meter all the way up to 15 meter. Um, they're better priced than some of our big competitors that I'm sure you're familiar with, and that's ordering one at a time. Uh, again, serial numbers on each end, full 18 gig. But uh, what's really nice, and then we have the long haul AOC cables. So these are called active optical cables. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen these before. They're full 18 gig. It's a fiber copper hybrid cable. You do not need to power them uh, on either end. There's no option for power. So it just uses a five volt hot plug that's present on the HDMI. Um, again, serial numbers on each end, super thin, easy to use. But what's unique about these is these have four strands of fiber optics in them. So they're full 18 gig now. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a, a new chipset in these that'll be doing 48 gig, believe it or not. Uh, but right now they're full 18 gig. Um, let's say 8K comes around, you have one of these cables installed. Just clip the head off and you got four strands of fiber already ran. So you could you could terminate one of our balins onto the, on one of those you know strands of fiber if you wanted. So you're actually pre-running four strands of fiber optic cable just by using a, a, an AOC cable now. So you'll be able to cut that head off and actually terminate that fiber. It's using the, the clear line fiber. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that too, the stuff where you don't need a fusion splice or anything like that. You can actually terminate in about a minute. It's, it's pretty amazing, but uh, you're good to go with 18 gig now, and you already got your fiber pre-ran. And these are at a very, very competitive price point too. So an example would be like the 15 meter, be like $183. The 40 meter, which is the longest one that we have, these are going from 10 to 40 meters on the AOC cables, would be 275. So if you don't need control uh, and you want to do, you know, a run uncompressed, this would, this would be your option for that. And then we've been doing our own fiber optics too. This is bullet train fiber optics. This is just clear line fiber that we branded. Um, and this happens to be OM3 duplex. There's actually two strands of fiber there. Uh, but again, with our balance, you only need one. So there's a lot of other fiber extenders out, out there that you need two strands. This is all over one. Um, other than that, some of the new stuff here, here's that DA12. This is our most popular fix it product. Again, $90 dealer. Uh, we get your, give you audio extraction and again your two outputs, but again one of them you can scale. Uh, and then we have the uh, one by four, one by eight, pretty self-explanatory, all 18 gig. This is kind of a unique one too that we just came out with. So this is a two by eight, so you can do two zones at a time with this one, uh, or you can do one to eight. So perfect for like a, you know a little divisible conference room type deal, uh, but full 18 gig scalers on each output. So if you have a mixed system, great. Um, and you actually get with this one, give you net, network control. So it's a DA uh, that you can actually put on the network uh, and control and monitor, um, give you your audio breakouts. Uh, so this is a two zone distribution amplifier. So again, you can do, you know, two to two to eight, you know, or two to four, one to four, the other one to four, or you can do all, all of them, uh, one to all as well. So full 18 gig scalers, network controllable, you know, about $300 dealer. Um, other than that, it's about all as far as, uh, you know, new products, things to cover. I don't think I really missed anything. Oh, here we go. Some of you guys are thinking, why would I do an HDMI switch? Uh, you got this the squid rack right here, too. So... Even if you do an HDMI switch, even if you do a 16 by 16, you can still utilize the balance very effectively. So this squid rack will hold all of our balance, um, up to eight of them, and then we have a single power supply. So this will work with all of our extenders, except for the BKTs, you know, those inexpensive ones with the 12 volt power supply on them. The squid will work with all of our balance, and this rack will also mount all, all eight of them. So, you know, usually if we do have the HD base T options, of course, but you know, if you want to save $1,000, go with the HDMI version, with the 444 balance. You still get all your scaling, get the same functionality. Some guys actually like that a lot more because you have a little bit more modularity on it, and you can still make it look real nice in the rack. So 
you know, back when we had just HDMI only uh, matrices because we hadn't figured out the ICT compression, that was the number one objection is that you don't have HD base T. And we'd say, well, you don't have 18 gig and you have no scaling. This has really helped overcome a lot of those objections. So what questions do we have? All right. So first of all, just a real quick comment on the squid and the, the racking. So this has been really popular in commercial where, let's say, uh, uh, within the restaurant or within the, the, the lounge or whatever, you've got eight or ten TVs and then you've got like a patio or something like that where you're going to have four more. You know, instead of buying a, uh, an eight-channel matrix or a 16-channel matrix – with a ton of HD base T outputs when you only need a couple, you buy the HD base, you buy the HDMI version and then you buy extender packs and uh, use the, use the squid to implement them. So like you said, it's a cost savings and it's not, you know, if you're doing like a 16, 16 uh, output uh, HDMI switch with 16 extender kits, that obviously gets to be a little bit of a, cable bundle but when it's you know it's more reasonable and the squid certainly makes it look neat all yeah, right let's yeah, go so yeah, two power supplies for 16 balance yeah it's pretty cool all right I don't know if right. I don't think I can see the chat, but I don't know if there's any no, questions got, in there. I've got it here. So, um, yeah. So the MX16 by 16 or MX1616. When will it be compatible with video wall extenders? Uh, the 16 by 16 won't. So that, okay. that won't have. Basically, the Cloud Nine is it's got our uh, it's completely different matrix. So it's got our FPGA or field programmable gate array chipsets in there. Um, so we're actually doing video wall controlled hardware. Um, we will have though just standalone uh, video wall processor. I, I was back there the other day. We're we're uh, we're finalizing the software on it. Actually, it's a little one in four out. Um, little video wall processor and you can stack them together so you can do up to I think 16 displays with it but just by itself it's a little one to four um, and we'll be selling those for for really inexpensive um, you know way less than a thousand dollars I'd imagine so we'll have we'll have additional pieces that you can build onto that um, but the the video wall processors are strictly for the cloud nine um, we will have a 4k version of the cloud nine hopefully by the summer as well uh, so that's been delayed a little bit, but well, right now the Cloud9 is 1080p, uh, but we will have a 4K version. Um, we found that a lot of the applications that that's going into is is bars, restaurants, is is really what that was built towards, and they're not pushing any 4K content. They might have 4K displays, in, in which case the displays are going to upscale, um, but that versus like an AV over IP solution is going to look physically much better to have an uncompressed 1080p signal that's going in and just being simply upscaled than, you know, trying to shove things down a, you know, really small network switch. So we've got a lot of feedback on that, that guys that have done AV over IP um, really instantly notice notice a difference right off the bat, even though it's 1080p. Okay, the, uh, we had another question that came up about the price points of the new, um, the new kits with the ARC and then also of the new kits that come in uh, under the existing product. So the EX40 444 plus, that'll be 469 dealer. So compare that to the EX40 444 kit, it's $100 more. So $100 more for the ARC and the uh, USB functionality. The EX100 444, the one that supports Ethernet, USB, and ARC, um, those 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 kits are at. 556 dealer okay all right um question about the matrix switches uh how is audio handled on the matrix switches can you uh elaborate on how audio is handled via either breakout and also does audio yeah. always follow video and then can you go back to the slides on that if if you yeah. got one can can you see the slides on the switches now is that, is that what you guys are seeing HD base T matrix switchers, or what are you seeing?
Hello? Yeah, I had the questions tab popped up over it, so I didn't see okay, that you yeah, no worries. the squid. Yep, yep. So, yeah, on all of our matrices, um, kind of hard to see on this. I'll, I'll pull it up on our on this. This will be better. Switches. So we'll just go to the 8x8 HD base T. How about? We give you both digital and analog audio breakouts. Let's see here. There we go. So there's your SPDIF and then your analog. By the way, we have adapters too. So a little five pin to two channel uh, audio breakouts. And then I don't know if you guys saw on our on our extenders, the 444 ones, we have a three pin audio extraction. So we have those uh, breakout cables as well. So both digital and analog audio breakouts, you can bind those to the input, to the output, or you can independently matrix it wherever you want. So again, we're giving you the audio extraction we are not down mixing internally in the switch as of yet. So if you want two channel to come out of here, you're going to want to set your source to two channel. So if you're not doing, you know, surround, no big deal. Great. We can get, you know, two channel right out of there. Um, if you need to do two channel and uh, surround at the same time, then you need a, one of those down mixers. So, um, you know, if you, most commonly, if you're not doing Atmos, just take that, you know, the, uh, the, the we call it the Kodo, the uh, coax or Toslink, uh, down mixer and use this port right here and just go into that down mixer and then you can go into your two channel amp and distribute that. So again, you can bind it to the input, the output, or you can independently matrix it wherever you want. And okay. you know, this summer we'll have a down mixing switch actually um, very shortly here, but not as of yet. Nice. Okay. Um, the next question that comes is about, you mentioned in the, the BTAOC that you can terminate those. And that's, uh -huh. so if you were to install that today for a, for a 4K application that just needed 18 gig signal, and let's say they're buying, the customer is thinking about adding one of these 8K TVs in the next couple of years, or maybe they bought a 4K just within the past couple of years. So we can just lop off the ends of these and then just, discard the copper side of it and just re-terminate the, the fiber side of it? That's correct. That's correct. Nice. So what's the best yeah. practice? Like buy one that's maybe an extra meter or, you know, the whatever the next size longer so you've got a little bit of slack to deal with to for your termination? Yeah, yeah, you can do that as well. But, yeah, I mean, you don't you don't need to chop off a bunch. You know, you can literally just do it right behind the head and, and you got your fiber to work with. Okay. Nice. You got you got to sell the clear line too, right? So yeah, we do. Yeah, we've got the ends on that. Yeah. Stock. yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's a little five hundred dollar termination kit. Couldn't be easier. Yeah, and like your comment earlier about how easy how easy it is. So right. um we've had um we've had Cameron out to do the training on it and you know, his his line is that it's essentially no more difficult than terminating a cat six. If you can terminate a cat six, you can terminate a fiber. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, if anyone else has any additional questions, please feel free to type them into the the questions tab. Let me go down to chat and see if anyone posted anything in there. No, we're definitely working on the questions today, which is good. So I think we've addressed everything so far. All right. One thing, too, is that... What you know, if you guys have passive cables out there and they're they're 18 gig, those will all be good for 24 gig. Not necessarily just ours, but if you have an 18 gig passive cable, when uh, you know the HDMI 2.1, the first version comes out, which is uh, compressed, um, you'll have enough bandwidth to cover that. Just a little tidbit. Oh, that's that's good to know. All right. Yeah. Um, let me see. I think that's it for today, Jared. I think uh, I want to thank you for for taking this on some fairly short notice and and coming in to, to uh, talk to us about the new extenders and then the line. So if anyone has any additional questions. Please feel free to uh, to reach out to your favorite all-net salesperson, 
or customer contact person, or just follow up with one of the emails. I know that uh, you get emails from me each week about the webinar series, so you can always reply to any of those uh, webinar emails to ask questions about today's presentation or any of the presentations from the past few weeks. And uh, if I can't answer it, I'll forward it to the person who can. So, Jared uh, Allnet would like to thank you for for being a uh, great partner to us, and then for also for supporting our training series. And yeah, thanks for having me anytime. All right, so thank you for everyone uh, for joining us today, and we're going to go ahead and end the call now.